Hey everybody, this is Roberto Blake of RobertoBlake.com and today I'm geeking out with you over an interesting topic. We're going to be talking about GPU versus CPU in video editing and rendering. Now, if you're into video editing at all like I am, then you've often tried to decide whether you should spend more money on your CPU, which is the brains of the computer, or your GPU, your video graphics card. Now, as a graphic designer and somebody else who does video editing and After Effects and all this other stuff, there have been conflicting debates and arguments about this over the years. A lot of people, because the word graphics is in graphic design, assume that you need a powerful GPU in order to do things like Photoshop. Well, you really don't. But when it comes to video editing, when it comes to using things like After Effects or 3D modeling or video editing and rendering from Premiere Pro, there are advantages to having a graphics card, a very powerful one if you can afford it. But at the end of the day, I honestly have to say that it is better to spend more money into your CPU. The CPU does the bulk of the work when it comes to video rendering. When it comes to video editing and you want great displays in full resolution, uh, you want to use special effects, you want to do color grading, you want smooth video playback with no delay or drop frames, then that's when a graphics card can really help out. It also can help out in rendering and speed things up. In my case, when I added the GTX 1070 from NVIDIA and ASUS, I used the ASUS Republic of Gamers ROG Strix Edition. Well, for me, that cut my video rendering times in half, and you would think that that indicates that GPU matters more, but the reason that it helps so much is because it takes some of the burden off of the CPU from doing other tasks so they can focus on what it really needs to do. So in combination, these things working together as a team is really what's important. Also, multiple GPUs set up in SLI are specifically to help you out with things that involve gaming. When it comes to video editing and rendering, if you're going to use two graphics cards, then they need to be standalone graphics cards. They don't need to be SLI or Crossfire. That's a gaming thing, not a video editing and rendering thing. So keep that in mind. If you were going to buy two very good graphics cards, you're looking at $600 to $700. You'd be better served spending that kind of money in a very powerful CPU, either a very advanced uh, six core or eight core CPU, would be a better investment of that type of money and then using a powerful single graphics card for 300 or 400 bucks. Five if you've got it. The graphics cards that I would recommend right now are the GTX 1070 from whichever brand you prefer and also the GTX 980 Ti. These are relatively in the same price range as of the making of this video. You'll pay somewhere between $450 and $550, but these graphics cards are going to probably be the best bang for your buck overall when it comes to video playback performance when you're editing and rendering from programs like Premiere and After Effects. As far as CPUs, you're going to want something like an i7 ideally, and you're going to want a minimum of four cores. I currently run uh, four cores at 4.4 gigahertz with a little bit of overclocking and I think that does really well for me and it's great within most price ranges but if you can pop $480, $560 for something a little bit more robust, if you can get a six core i7 Skylake processor then you're probably better off spending the money there. I'll talk about RAM in a second video, but 16 gigs is plenty. Whenever I've done my video rendering, uh, that's about the most that it's utilized. If you like the ability to maybe do something else while your computer is rendering, do some uh, email or some surfing or whatever else you could be thinking to do, then I would recommend that you go for 24 or 32 gigs of RAM. It may not help with your video rendering performance. It might help when you're doing things like After Effects though. So that's just something to keep in mind. If you're doing 3D or you're doing any kind of motion graphics, more RAM is always definitely helpful. If you're using Final Cut Pro, in most cases you can get away with eight gigs because of the way that that is specifically optimized. You don't get that much more out of 16 gigs in the Mac and Final Cut Pro. So you may not need to actually spend as much money on the fanciest Mac there. It's better to spend more money into the processor than anything when it comes to that and possibly getting a Mac that has a better graphics card, maybe an integrated one. Mac's running AMD mostly right now instead of Nvidia. With Photoshop and Premiere Pro and the Adobe programs, they're optimized a lot more for the Intel and Nvidia chipsets. So that's just something you wanna keep in mind. I'm getting this information from Adobe's website, their blogs, and the Adobe hardware performance white paper. It's not something that I just decided on my own. So I hope you guys understand uh, a little bit more about the conversation of video editing and rendering, especially when we're talking about 4K video, 
for CPU versus GPU. It is both of them working together. They both have a role to play, but if you're gonna spend more money, spend it on the CPU. Anyway, if you have questions about video editing and video rendering, definitely leave those in the comment section. I actually do have a tutorial video for Premiere Pro on the best video um, export settings for YouTube if that's something you guys are interested in. Anyway, like this video if you like it. Don't forget to subscribe. Check out the other awesome content on the channel. As always, you guys, thanks so much for watching. And don't forget, create something awesome today, maybe with the power of video editing.